This is going to be a tutorial on how to use screen tones in Clip Studio Paint. Um, so on the left here I have a picture that I've screen toned and I'm just going to turn off the screen tone layers for a moment and I'm going to show you how to recreate the screen tones from scratch. So first you're going to want to open the right side menu, um, click the monochromatic selection and then choose the one I've selected on the screen. What you're going to do is you're going to drag it into your layer palette, to your layer window, and make sure you drag it between two layers and not into an existing layer. And what's going to happen is it's going to cover the entire canvas with the screen tone that you chose. So um, I'm going to show you that you can erase off the screen tone. But you can also just select all and delete it for now. So let's do a lasso selection of the area that we want to add screen tone to. Okay, and once you have the area selected, you're going to want to just bucket fill. And that will add the screen tone to the area that you selected. So I want to show you here, what's happening is something that's called MOIR, M-O-I-R-E. And that's just what, that's how, what happens to screen tone when the screen resolution cannot properly display the screen tone. So what you're going to want to do is just set your canvas to a zoom level where the screen tone is comfortable to look at. Okay, and then typically with screen tone you're going to want to scratch off, quote unquote, scratch off some of the, the screen tone. Typically what I do is I'll add a new layer and start drawing onto that layer to create the effect of having scratched off some of the screen tone. So here I've used a combination of a hatching brush and an airbrush. But I don't really like the effect, so I'm going to try um, using different tools. This, in this case, I'm going to use um, the spray brush. And let me just show you um, exactly what this what I'm spraying onto the canvas right now. It's actually um, that pattern right there. But overlaid onto the screen tone, it creates the effect of having scratched off some of the screen tone. And then I'm just going to use uh, the cross hatching brush and cross hatch out the middle of the light source that we're drawing here. So that's one way to use the screen tone layer. Another way to use a screen tone layer is to draw in some of the screen tone that was cut out earlier. So basically you just use your brush, brush as you normally would, um, but make sure the screen tone layer is selected and you'll see that you'll be drawing in the screen tone. Okay, and then I'm going to go here onto the blankets and kind of quickly just, you know, add in a little bit of shadow. Normally, I, for screen tones, I don't add a whole lot to the characters themselves. I feel like with characters, sometimes you can end up with a better effect if you use color to create the different valuations on their, on their body. And, um, you know, sometimes with screen tone, you just want to have clean screen tone. Yeah, and I think that's going to work. Okay, and then um, I'm going to use now the spray brush onto this part of the um, of the mattress. And I think that creates the effect that we want. Not necessarily on the um, the flat surface of the the bed frame but um, on the sort of more organic surface of the cloth. 
Um, yeah, and then I'm going to add a little bit more shadow on the people. And now let's move on to the bookshelf. So again, just starting off with clean selections on the um, on the bookshelf. Here, I'm going to use the gauze decoration tool and add a little bit of shadow. For the books, I'm, I'm going to go in with the brush just to create a little bit of a different effect. Now let's go on to the book. So I'm going to duplicate the screen tone layer that we just created and I'm going to clear it out so that we have a new screen tone layer to work with. And I'm going to do a quick selection on the book. Okay, and so for this exercise, I'm going to try to create a different darkness of the screen tone. And so I've just increased the number of dots within the selected, er selected area. And you can kind of tweak it several different ways, actually. You can tweak it both in terms of the number of dots per, per inch, or you can also adjust the density, which I've, which I've just cranked up a bit. You see if I move it down to 27 and decrease the density, we get a different feel there. So again, it's tough, you know, when you zoom out when you're trying to take a look at it, but I think that's roughly the effect that we want to have. The, you know, we want the screen tone on the book to look a little bit darker than the screen tone used in the background. Okay, so on to the next picture which I think is going to be a little bit simpler. And I think that's it. Um, you know, again, you want to stay, you want to be subtle with the screen tone. Um, here are some more examples of panels that I've done with screen tone. Here's another example. Um, this one actually has two layers. So show you them one by one. And you can see in you know you can combine screen tone on top of each other. This one's a pretty simple one. And this one again has two combined on top of each other, uh, which I probably wouldn't do. Um, I just think it, it starts to look a little bit messy, but we'll just leave it that way for now. Yeah, so this is the end of the tutorial. Um, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.